image puppets, Norman Sebbett, right through to Bruce Springsteen, is John Sessions. Good morning to you, John. Good morning, man. <laughs> Actually, you've got a real problem now because you've had, highly unpleasantly, some marvellous reviews, <laughs> wonderful reviews, um, and you've now got to be witty on tap. Yes. That's, that's right, Mike. <laughs> Thank I'm you very for a witty marvellous interview. <laughs> on tap. I'm going to be very witty. Any time, any children's parties or Masonic gatherings, actually, I will be there. It is quite difficult, actually, isn't it? Because oh, presumably no. everybody says, do as, uh, you know, do as Jimmy Grease, John. You know? Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, it's very tricky, especially at whatever it is, 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, the full spate of, uh, can we call them impressions? Or impersonations yeah. Yeah. are appearing in Napoleon, your celebrated one-man show. And yeah. The American version. The American version, that's right, because its eventual destination is America. Yeah. Although we'll probably jig another version before it goes over the water. But it's now the sort of, uh, all the references, hitherto they were all very uh, English references, and now there are whole sections in the style of King Kong, On the Waterfront, John Coltrane, Charlie Bird Parker, um, big swing bands of the 30s, Woody Allen, who all um, played their part in Napoleon, presumably? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, all the people in his life, like, his, they're all changed. The brothers last time were um, Lucien Bonaparte and just... Napoleon had about seven brothers, but only used two because, you know, it gets too complicated. Yeah. And the most important ones were Giuseppe and Lucien, and last time they were uh, Tom Watts, Lofty, from EastEnders. Sorry, Tom, to say that. Lofty. <laughs> uh, and also, uh, who's the other brother, gosh almighty, it was Ian McKellen, yeah. that's right. And now it's um, Sylvester Stallone and Robin Williams. Well, well quite obvious, really, when yeah. you think of it. But I mean, I was really pleased to see Edward Fox at last being acknowledged his uh, place in history as the Duke of Wellington. I'm his biggest fan. Keith Richard and Edward Fox I have an irrational enthusiasm for. I just adore them, I love to watch anything they do. But I'm, I'm met, Eddie's biggest fan, I think he's the it, greatest. I mean, if I met Edward's uh, Duke, I mean, wh what kind of conversation would he engage me in? Very brief, probably. You'd probably ask a long question to which you would say yes, or no, or have a cake. He was a man mm. of action. He was a man of action, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm fascinated to see that, um, well, would you get into trouble for doing Lord Olivier? Because you, because the, the Good great question. man recently... It, yes, and I, now, Kenneth Branagh, who's directing this show, and I talked about this after he died, when we, he died just before we started rehearsing. And uh, Ken said, look, maybe we should have a wee acknowledgement in the piece. And I said, well, no, I don't think we should, because the, uh, what I do with him in the show is in no way in bad taste. I hope it is self-evident that I absolutely adore and worship Olivier, which I do. So, um, what, Now, what role know, does Lord Olivier play? In He's one he of plays 15 the Napoleons. No, he plays the narrator. All right. He's the guy who's sort of, I mean, it's basically exploiting his world of war voice. So all the information that when Nappy isn't acting it out or the other characters aren't interacting with him, something will happen and I'll turn away and I'll, in 1815, so-and-so happened, you know, with that sort of low-key delivery. Can you flick straight into that with no problem? Uh, from, well, from Anthony Hopkins to Olivier. To right, yes. As Anthony Hopkins has, got a, has been recast, has been cast. He wasn't cast last time. He's taken over from Peter O'Toole. Peter O'Toole has got a much better part now. He is now Napoleon in Egypt as Lawrence of Arabia. Oh. Um, last time he only had six you, lines as the Emperor, as the Tsar of Russia. Now Tony Hopkins is the Tsar of Russia. John, we'll, we'll talk later, but it seems to me if everybody studies this as history, there's going to be an awful lot of uh, GCSEO level failures. No, no, because it, it only takes liberties with interpretation. It's all yeah. factually correct. Well, Napoleon exercise. Well, King Kong as Napoleon is a bit rich. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what? And I don't think uh, yeah. if Napoleon was still alive, he'd, be, he'd take too kindly to being called Nappy. But, oh, no. uh, but we won't tell him. Oh, it's an old lovey expression. <laughs> dear, dear Nappy. <laughs> <laughs> Time now to get a quick update on the weather with Carol. Carol Hyde. Now, uh, Russell's waiting in the wings to tell us what's in the sun. <laughs> Let's say hello again to John Sessions. And John, uh, it, it occurs that... that before you entered the realm of the stage, television, and so on, mm. you could have become an academic, couldn't you? You were a doctorate in English. No, I was an honest drudge, to use Dr. Johnson's phrase. I was very, a phrase. I was very good at uh, reading lots of books and uh, working very hard at taking notes on them, but um, not got a first-class mind. All right, well, let's get political then. Do you actually sympathise, though, with the, the teachers and lecturers now who are pitying their own lot? Because that's what you... You might have become at one stage. Who are pitying... Who are... Pitying their own lot, aren't they, at the moment? Well, because of their... They feel undervalued. Oh, yes. Well, I think uh, that's uh, absolutely right. You know, I mean, they're just... Um, <laughs> my budgie's 
behaving yes, the, it's unlike... Yes, Timmy Mallet's budgie over there, magic, I think. Um, <laughs> No, the, well, I, I think the, the payment of, of teachers and uh, lecturers and everything is atrocious. Mm. Always has been. Yeah. That might mm. have been your background. It never, never did happen. Why? What translates somebody who likes doing impersonations at school, if you like, mm. and has a fairly quick comic mind, into almost full time? What? Where oh, do you make that jump, John? <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, you have to clean the well. windows. Oh, well. Uh, no. <laughs> um, it's just. Um, a, a decision I made to, to go and do it, really, you know, and I'd had enough of the academic thing. I realised I wasn't um, up for a career in it, really. Yeah. And uh, I know. <laughs> the um, magic stealing. The, the only thing I could do, really, was just, you know, just uh, have, a, have a crack, yeah. have a whirl, you know. So I went to RADA and, you know. You don't conform to the old theory that, that comedy is often just a, a form of self-defence. Was it ever that for you? Oh, you yes. Oh, yes. Total cliche for me, definitely. Why? In what way? Well, I was just another wee schlep at school, you know, and uh, to stop getting knocked about, you know, you made other people laugh, you did impersonations. So you think got into trouble with the teachers? A bit, yes, a wee bit, you know. I mean, yeah, in fact, some of them, yes, mm. uh, didn't take very kindly to it at all. <laughs> Fresh, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's leap forward, John. I mean, yeah. the, the, one of the really successful shows on television, I know you've done a lot of acting, but mm. whose line is it anyway? Uh -huh. And how quick is the mechanism, you're told to impersonate something or yes. somebody, how quick is the mechanism that happens in your brain? How well, it has to be pretty quick. You know, have to Can do you analyse it yourself? Not really. I just you just jump. It's like being on a trapeze, and you think like go. For it. Yeah. I mean, the other night we were recording. We were recording a new series at the moment. We're doing that at the weekend while I've been rehearsing mm. Napoleon during the week. Actors love. We work so hard. <laughs> and um, uh, I started doing something. I had to do something in the style. I did something in the style of Tutti Frutti. And I did a few wee bits and bobs, and I did uh, I did Robbie and Emma and you know Richard Robbie Wilson, Coltrane, and Mr. Yeah. Mr. What's his name? M Mr. Most, most, you know, Miss Toner and Mr. Clockerty. Oh, yeah, remember yeah. Mr. Clockerty? And they're always talking about cakes and things and tutti frutti. It's a very Scottish thing. Always talking about cakes and sugar. Yeah. It's a very big thing in John Byrne. Anyway, I started to do a wee piece, and I was about as funny as a fortnight in Hans Stanton. Sorry, Hans Stanton. <laughs> A very lovely part. Well, yeah. yeah, and uh, oh, just uh, hopeless, hopeless, hopeless. Yeah. But, How do you do in that situation when you know? Oh, well, I hope they're going to drop. I hope they're going to snip it and throw it and they'll throw it away. You know. If, if you, sorry. If, you, mm. if you're doing that something, something like that when you're doing it live, I suppose you, you don't actually put yourself into quite that ridiculous. Well, when you're dangerous doing live, you simply have to. Oh well, you, you, yes. I mean, I've, I've done that those sort of shows, and the show I did in BBC Two. <clears throat> some of the more sustained improvisations called on the spot and that's more like the sort of things that we do in the theatre. And how, how do you salvage something that you that you know isn't you don't. funny? But you, <laughs> you don't, you just get on to the next one. Yeah. You know, you just think right that was cobblers and hope they didn't notice it or isn't that abiding remembering. And then we, be brilliant the next time. Yeah. We hinted at the start that the, the danger for you now is that because of those are the things you've been doing on the television Absolutely. you'll get hoist with that. And Absolutely and this Napoleon show is it's a play, really. It's a one-man play, and it's not just funny either. It also it's very sad and dramatic and all of that. You know, oh. it's like a one-man RSC, but it's not as ludicrous. It's, I mean, mm. I acknowledge the ludicrousness of that idea of standing mm. there being very butch with Beethoven blasting away in big tricolors and sexy uniform and all that, yeah. like leather boots, girls. Yeah. Yep. That, that's what you're doing for, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's a charity aspect to it, isn't there? There certainly is, Mike. Um, Thank you. Now where are we? <laughs> in aid of the Peckham and Camberwell action on the rail link, because the Absolutely. Producer of the show's house is about to be crushed by that link. That's right. Um, I was asked to do this by one of the directors of the Renaissance Company, David Parfit. And uh, so we're doing that this Saturday at yeah. 2 o'clock at the Royalty Theatre Royalty Theater. <laughs> of then, Kingsway. And then Napoleon, plug, plug. the American story. That's what, it. What's it called? The Napoleon, the American? Napoleon, the, the untold American, American story. Appears and then, at Newcastle, Glasgow, Dublin and London. And Birmingham. After Birmingham. That's right. And uh, for those who watched Wogan the other night, to my fellow Scots, I am playing Glasgow. I'm looking forward to coming back to Glasgow to play the tramway. And wouldn't Napoleon bear a Scottish accent in Glasgow? No, no. There will be a couple of references to Glasgow, um, but the whole show is, uh, you know, it's it's basically the same show yeah. throughout. The Napoleon turns up with many different accents, doesn't he? Looking at he the does. list of people yes, that you've Yes, about forty odd folk. Some are better than others. My my Woody Allen is still six out of ten. I've really got a, and I've got a rather tricky Woody Allen sequence. And the Burton Taylor. I can do Burton, but the Taylors, I'm going to just have to sort of. 
get through that quick. Yeah. It's more difficult physically as well, isn't it? It is. You I have really got lovely eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you have got lovely eyes, John, but maybe not quite. I, d I don't really have what it takes to do, Liz. What's your theory about Timmy Mallet? Timmy Mallet? Are we allowed to say this on air? I think he looks awful like Boy George. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll yeah. check that out, John, because uh, he's mm. on next. For mm. the moment, thanks. We'd like to chat to you much more later, I think, uh, mm. at another stage. Um, you know, when you've improved. <laughs> when, I've, when, I've, when I've become funny, when I've got me a round old end of We are joking, of course. Yeah. Right, uh, let's tell us who, uh, who's joining us tomorrow. We've got Jane Seymour and Paul.